There are two types of problems in calculus that involve the same diagram, so I'm going to look at both of those problems with the same setup here. Uh, one of them involves running a cable underwater across a river and then along the land. And the idea is to uh, reduce the cost of getting from point A to point B. Uh, the other problem is someone is on an island or a boat or a shore over here and they have to either row or swim across to the other side and then again run along the uh, this distance you, they have to get from A to B and uh, they have to minimize the time that it takes. In both of these cases you'll be given the distance across the water. I've got four kilometers for that. Distance along here is eight kilometers. Set up some point along here, put a Y on that distance and X on this distance here, which leaves eight minus X for the remaining distance. It's important to put the X here rather than over there because you want this to be as simple as possible. We're going to set up a Pythagorean relationship y squared equals x squared plus 4 squared. And I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So that's the diagram I'm going to use for both of these questions. Now, the first question involves running this cable. It's $5 a meter underwater and $3 a meter along the land. So the cost of running that cable, since these are in kilometers, will be 5,000 times y and 3,000 times 8 minus x. That's the cost of getting across and along here. But just be careful uh, that you understand the, uh, the units that are given and uh, if you get large numbers like this there's nothing wrong with dividing both sides by a thousand reducing the numbers over here. You're going to take the derivative of this anyway and put it equal to zero, so it doesn't matter whether there's a constant over here or not. In fact, in some questions they may give you a ratio of costs, say 5 to 3, and these are 5k and 3k. Once again, just divide by the k, get it over here, and when you take the derivative, uh, it's going to disappear anyway. So we're going to replace the y with what we talked about on the first page here with the x squared minus, or x squared plus 16. I wrote it uh, to the half because I'm getting ready to take a derivative. Brought the 3 into the bracket. It just makes it a lot easier taking the derivative. So here's the derivative of the cost. The half comes down, that becomes 5 halves. Half drops to negative a half. The derivative of what's inside is 2x, that's just the chain rule. This constant disappears and the derivative of this is negative 3. And we're going to put that derivative equal to 0. I've cancelled the 2's, 2 goes into 2, 5x remains on the top and this root is now on the bottom. Now I like uh, cross multiplying so what I always do is I move that 3 to the other side. Then it would look like this. And the rest of this is very simple. Just cross multiply, looks like that. Square both sides. Do that very carefully. Notice this is 25x squared. 3 becomes 9, but you lose the root sign. And then you just multiply the 9 into the bracket, move your terms around until you can solve for x. And take the positive answer. I realize there are two answers here, plus or minus 3. Some teachers make a big deal out of that, saying that you got to have to acknowledge both of them, but we're going to take the positive answer here anyway. And then, depending on what they're asking in the question, this will be 3, and the, the remainder of the distance along here will be 5. The other question, which is a very similar setup, is the question of swimming, or it could be rowing across the water, 3 kilometers an hour, and uh, running along the shore at 5 kilometers an hour. So what we have to do here is we have to get a, a representative for time. And a lot of students use this little device here, distance, speed, time. And time is distance over speed. There's a reminder of that right here anyway. This is distance kilometers over time in hours. So the time required for this trip is, it looks very simple. It's just y divided by the speed plus 8 minus x divided by the speed. And once again replace the y. 
Now, take some time to set this up before you take the derivative. A lot of people would look at that and think, oh, I've got to use the quotient rule on that or the quotient rule on that. If you write it this way, you'll realize you don't have to get into that. This 3 can be written out in front as 1 third. Here's my square root. Here's the 8 fifths. That's going to disappear anyway. Minus, instead of writing x over 5, I like to write 1 fifth x just to remind myself that it's just a constant in front of a variable. And when I take the derivative, that constant appears here, the minus a fifth. This derivative, half times a third is 1 sixth, drops to negative a half times the derivative of what's inside. Very similar to the last setup that I had here. When you put it equal to zero, again, tidy it up as much as you can. 2 divides into the 6 3 times. x remains on top, and there's my root on the bottom. And once again, I'm going to move that minus a fifth to the other side. Cross multiply, so I've got 3 times the root equal to 5x. And again, square both sides, exactly the same as before and solve a very simple equation. And once again, the answer is x equals 3. So when you set these up, make sure your diagram always looks like this. Uh, but put your, your simple variable in here. It makes life so much easier when you, when you go to do the Pythagorean identity.